Hey guys, uh, we we're back in last epoch and wanted to make a build guide about the build that I've been playing recently. This is a forge guard using the Volcanus weapon uh, and a Vortex pennant. So this build is an Ignite Warpath build I've been playing. Um, I I really did want to use this Volcanus weapon in some way to, you know, just to see what it's like. A lot of people think this is like a meme weapon I guess and it is sort of a meme weapon because it is pretty bad honestly after playing with it for a week I don't really think it's actually that bad I think but I think it can be improved to make it a little bit better I guess we'll go into that a little bit later but anyway so this sword has a chance to cast magma shards on melee hit now this only is a 10% and if you look at the other like on hit weapons that you have uh, for example like a a Reign of Winter, which is a very nice bow. This has a 25% chance, goes all the way up to 28 uh, to cast, you know, its proc. So definitely a lot lower chance on this sword. I don't know why it's only at 10%. And then I guess when it does proc, the actual damage is pretty low. And it is very hard to hit targets with it because it shoots out four targets in like a plus or like a kind of thing around your character. And a lot of times these don't really actually hit anything right so first of all um i wanted to play forge guard because forge guard is uh i've never really actually played it honestly and i'm always going for the paladin or the void knight you know so i wanted to try a forge guard out and uh, forge guard did have this node here molded by the forge which gives us a 40 percent increased attack speed with the 200 sword so i thought that would be pretty nice and you can see right now we are at about 107% increased attack speed. This We can actually get a lot more if we get some better gear. But this is what we're at right now. And with about 100% increased attack speed with Warpath, uh, we're seeing these procs like quite often. Now, a lot of times you'll proc about like five or six of them in like within one second, uh, depending on how many enemies you're hitting, right? So uh, this is very cool with the increased attack speed. But I think, first of all, we will go over a quick um, monolith. So right now I'm trying to push 300 uh, at 254. Um, and it's been handling these monoliths uh, no problem. I think we can just uh, run this one. So Forge Guard does have a lot of uh, good um, benefits. I don't know why this is all blue here. But uh, it's mainly uh, def defensive benefits. So we have this Ring of Shields here, which is amazing ability. Probably my uh, my new favorite defense ability because you'll see a lot of times in Monoliths that there'll be these ranged guys like the um, the guys that throw the axes. You know, like I said, like for the hunt and stuff like that. And they throw these axes at you or like the eye things that shoot these like little projectiles at you. But these these shields basically block all of them. So... Uh, most of the time you're, you're not really gonna die from those guys and they're you know they've killed a lot of my other characters um, and stuff like that but on with the ring of shields they are pretty much like not even a, a threat at all all right so we are just gonna oh, we have to kill enemies to lure out an ambush so you can see uh, since we are ignite it's not like a lot of instant damage um, you know it does take a little bit of ramp uh, ramp time but you can see we are pretty damn tanky. Uh, dropping a little bit low. It's not, but we shouldn't really be tanking a lot of this stuff. But it is pretty hard to see what is going on. But we did kill these guys off. And hopefully we get the ambush uh, soon. Just gotta try to loot all this stuff without dying. Maybe if we kill these guys, uh, then we'll get the ambush or not. Oh, we actually ran out of mana. Okay. All right, so still did not get the ambush. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got the ambush. Oh, it's this poison one. This guy is a piece of cake. So we'll just kind of just stand here, spin around a bit, and wait for them to die. Uh, we can cast uh the reversal thing get some extra damage in we'll kill off the little bug over here too i think this did have like increased health on it yeah 
But anyways, yeah, so that's the mono. Um, pretty easy. Let's just get out of here. All right. So um, pretty, um, pretty nice, you could say. Very relaxing gameplay. All you have to do is pretty much just cast Warpath. And uh, you can actually numlock this, right? So you can just like spin around and you don't even have to push the, you know, push the button. You can just like move through the monolith. I actually uh, finished the mono the other day, like just using my feet. I, did, I didn't even use my hands. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, so very like relaxing gameplay. Uh, just spin spin around to the mono every now and then, you know, push your reversal and on bosses, I guess you use your sigils and I have had them all set up so that they're instant cast basically. So you can just push them while you're spinning and it's no problem. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's get into some of the um, gear and stuff like that and uh, explain what we're doing here and what kind of like, you know, affix affixes and stuff you want. So I guess obviously we are using the Volcanus weapon uh, with the Vortex Pennant. These two uniques are something that you probably want to have before you start the build. And you don't actually really need to use this weapon. And I pretty, I'm pretty sure you can get more damage um, if you're using like a 200 axe or, you know, an exalted axe or something like that. Because you'll get some extra bleed chance and stuff like that. Or even just, you know, an exalted sword might be better than this. But the, um, the procs on the Volcanus do count as hits, right? So they are giving us a little bit more ignite when they do hit. And it does kind of uh, help your clear, I guess, a little bit. So, uh, and I do like how the proc looks. So on, I'm just using this right now. As for the exalted uh, affixes on this, you can see I have increased physical damage. And the reason I uh, want this is because of the Vortex Pennant now. Um, it might not really be that important to actually get this, but Vortex Pennant, basically, you throw an axe at a nearby enemy when you're channeling Warpath, so you can see we're throwing out these axes. Uh, and you can, it, it's usually like once every second, right? But then you can increase the frequency that the axes are thrown by increasing your physical damage. So, uh, physical damage works, or all... Uh, generic damage works so like just increased damage works um, and I believe increased damage while channeling works stuff like that so um, I wanted to try that out like the increased frequency first so I uh, slapped on the increased physical damage you can see I'm at about 460 ish and this will go up to about 600 once we have all three sigils, so I mean 500, right? So we have 500% increased chance to throw the axe, so we're getting a lot more axes thrown out, which are then proccing smite with our um, idols over here. So for, I guess, this weapon, you probably want to get ignite chance and attack speed as well on this thing. I've been trying to farm one of these, but I haven't got another drop with uh, LP, so... Uh, stuck with this right now, but I guess if I could add about three affixes, it'd be the fizz damage, ignite, ignite chance, and then uh, attack speed, I guess, right? So, pretty nice. Alright, uh, for the vortex pennant, you can see I do have a plus two smite on here and increase elemental damage over time. Now, when I actually did... Uh, change this into a legendary. I was trying to do more of like a hybrid with like ignite and then some smite, um, smite on hit damage as well. So that's why I went for the plus two smite. But now that I think about it, um, smite ended up being more of like a utility kind of spell in the build. So you don't really need the plus two on here. You might want to go for some life or uh, you could actually go for a sigils of hope plus two on there if you want it might help with some mana issues and stuff like that but anyways yeah um probably just focus on just getting life and elemental damage over time on your relic all right after that i decided to go for some wing guards there's a couple of uh, glove options you can actually use uh let's just see let's go over to the gloves so uh you can use atrophy uh atrophy these are nice too but um You'll have to figure out how to get haste in the build if you do want haste because, you know, haste uh, is really nice for a warpath because we're constantly hitting and it really does increase our movement speed. You can see we are um, 
I guess we're not really that slow, but we're not really that fast. But with haste, this build does get a lot faster, and it does feel a lot better in the uh, monoliths. So you can use the uh, atrophy. There's another one you can use here too. Um, maybe like something like this, right? I've got a lot of these. Uh, the I don't know how to pronounce this, but it may Malin's hubris. So these convert our bleed chance to ignite. And we already are converting the bleed chance to ignite with a cyclone, or not cyclone, with the warpath. Um, but our, say like, the procs from our Volcanus, or the axes that get thrown from here, or our smites are not having the bleed chance converted to ignite. So if you don't really have, um, say you don't have wing guards, or you don't have, you don't have atrophy, then maybe you could use these uh, might be okay but then yeah probably even just a rare uh rare pair of gloves or an exalted pair of gloves you know with some attack speed damage over time life and stuff like that uh, that can work as well but i think overall i did test the atrophy and i did test the wing guards and in monoliths wing guards definitely did feel a lot better maybe against bosses you could swap over to a pair of uh, atrophy to get a little bit more uh, fire penetration all right, so for the boots, um, I had a pair of these in my stash, so I'm just using these, and I think these are probably gonna be um, the best pair of boots you can get for this build because it gives quite a lot of movement speed, first of all. 20% uh, increase, that's actually higher than T5, I believe. T5 only goes up to 18%, I think, on the boots. So it does have the uh, nice movement speed, and it also has 30, uh, let's see, up to 35% fire penetration, which is really big for damage. Uh, it's got a little bit of increased fire damage, so okay. The fire trail when you are a crit is, um, I guess it just basically ignites enemies, right? So a little bit of extra damage when it procs. And then, uh, eight, uh, what do you call it? 84% less bonus, bonus damage taken from crits. This is pretty big, right? Because you do want to get crit immune in the build. And, but I mean, you don't have an extra chance to be crit, but you're reducing the damage from the crit, so it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really hurt that much, right? So you just get one more affix somewhere, or you don't even really need it. I don't think I'm actually running another crit damage reduction affix anywhere else. Uh, sadly, I haven't really been able to find one with LP yet, but if I did, you probably want to get move speed and life on the boots. All right, so the rest of the gear is pretty much just rare gear. Uh, this build will kind of struggle with getting your lightning and cold resistance. You can see while we're channeling uh, Warpath, it is going to be reducing our elemental resistances by 30. So I'm actually not even uh, capped right now on resistance, but you don't really need to. I think I'd say around 70% should be fine. Um, but And there are some other ways you can get resistance. We'll go over that in the when we go over the skills and the passive tree. Right, so the rest of the gear is going to be, uh, let's just see, some things that you want on the helmet. Uh, first of all, the probably the best affix you can get is the fire damage and increased ignite duration. That's uh, really big for damage. Uh, getting a plus two volatile uh, reversal, it is, it is okay. Um, not really needed. You can say we're, we're, we're only going to be getting this 20% increased attack speed when we use that. So if you don't have the plus two to volatile uh, reversal, then you just won't have these two points, but it's not really the end of the world. So you don't really actually need the plus two on here, but it is nice. Uh, and then after that, we do want to get as many levels of Warpath as we can. Um, preferably you want this to be a plus three or a plus four even, if you can uh, actually find one of these. And the endurance while channeling warpath. This is actually bugged, I think, because you can see my endurance is at 46% when we're channeling warpath. Nothing really changes. So kind of sad. And this was, I actually did craft that on there, it was an open slot. So I'm pretty sad that this is bugged because, yeah, would have been real nice if it wasn't uh, bugged. But, anyways, you could probably go for some more fire damage there if you want. Or actually, yeah, Vitality would be good as well. Get a little bit more health. All right, and the rest of the gear is just going to be Elemental Damage over time and then health, right? Elemental Damage over time, health, and then getting 
your resistances. You're going to need, uh, I think, uh, at least some cold and lightning resistance somewhere on the on your gear to kind of uh, make up for the warpath, reducing your res uh, elemental resistances. All right, and necklace too. You do want to get some frailty somewhere on one of your gear pieces. I think neck necklace might be uh, or amulet might be a good place to get it. Uh, because it's going to uh, make you quite a lot more tanky if you do have it. Okay, so that is basically the gear. We'll go over the idols. I'm using um, four of these try to uh, cast smite uh, uh, when you hit with throwing attacks. This is going to proc off our vortex pennant. And uh, I am actually also using this axe thrower in sentinel. Uh, people actually don't really like this or a lot of people that i've like seen on reddit and stuff like that they're all saying that this axe thrower node isn't really all that good but i do like it because you get those you know situations on bosses and stuff like that where you are proccing like three or four smites in a row because you get a couple of these axe throws two of these axe throws and then the other axe thrower uh passive from sentinel procs and you get some like three three four smites in a row and that's pretty nice for um extra ignite damage and stuff like that and since we are attacking so fast, uh, it is it is uh, pretty easy to actually cap this, uh, what do you call it, proc this, like every second, basically. All right, and there is really not that much else you could do. I guess you could have gotten a little bit more vitality here, like five vitality. Um, you get a little bit more increased damage, maybe, or a little bit of health, right? But nothing really that is, like, extremely impactful um, in the build, right? So... Uh, it's not really waste points, I think. All right, so that's the um, idols. And after that, I'm just getting some elemental resistances um, and then some armor and health. All right, so that is the relics or the idols, I guess, all right? So let's go over some of these skills. So first of all, for a cyclone, um, okay, Warpath, okay, I gotta stop calling it cyclone. Uh, Warpath, uh, we are going down to convert it to fire, and then we're getting the smite on, uh, what do you call it, while we're channeling. So it'll, pro it'll cast smite while we're channeling every second. And this does actually use the smite mana cost. So uh, in order to kind of like counter that, uh, we're going up to the dark nexus. So every time we're spinning, uh, oh uh, yeah, because so when you're using Warpath, you cannot regenerate mana, right? So you can see if we drop our mana down and we start casting Warpath, it, the regen stops, basically, right? So you will have this problem where you're, you're Warpathing and then Smite is draining your mana. And if you want to use like Sigils of Hope or your Ring of Shields, then you're eventually going to get to the point where you're actually out of mana. Then you got to stop and wait for it to regen. And so, in order, so we don't have to do that. Uh, in order to, I guess, counter that, we're going up to here to get the Dark Nexus. So while we're spinning, we gain mana every three seconds. And you have to use a two-handed weapon for this, right? So we're getting 28 mana every three seconds. And so this is basically enough mana so that we can actually use our, you know, Sigils of Hope. And we can uh, have our Ring of Shields on autocast and use everything without running out of mana. And so that's kind of why I think getting levels to Warpath is going to be pretty important because we are skipping some nodes here that are pretty big for Ignite damage, like the, you can get a little one more point here for some more uh, Bleed Chance, which is con getting converted into Ignite. Then you can also get some more Ignite Penetration or Fire Penetration with Ignite, which is going to be really big for damage. So if the more levels you have in Warpath, the better. You can uh, get some more points here uh, for some extra damage. All right, we are also taking this reduced channel cost over here. Uh, and this is why we need to get a lot of elemental resistances because we are going to be at minus 30 while we're channeling. Okay, so for Smite, uh, I did try a lot of setups on Smite. I did try an actual... Uh, so this build, I did try going for a crit on hit build instead of Ignite 2, but that didn't really feel as good as the Ignite version. Then I did try like a hybrid Smite, and then I went down here to get some, you know, extra damage with Smite. And it was okay, but in the end, I think I just go for the pure Ignite playstyle and have Smite do some extra healing. So we're going down to the Ignite Chance first of all, and then we get this Immolate so we can apply 
uh, spreading flames. So spreading flames doesn't really do that much damage, but it is some nice like area damage, right? Because it spreads uh, to quite a lot of enemies and it has a lot of a pretty big spread range. So it'll spread to enemies off screen and then they'll all come run to you and then you can uh, psych, uh, what do you call it, warpath them down. So it's pretty nice. All right, and then we're going down here and we're getting the uh, attack and cast speed if we have cast smite uh, recently, if we hit someone with smite, which is pretty much always, right? So it's always up. And then we're going for the 200% increased healing. So this healing is actually very nice on top of all of our regen. Oh, I did actually forget to mention that. So this uh, sword here, this gives us 7% of fire damage leached as health. So this basically covers all of our leech. We don't have to get leech anywhere else. Uh, so that is actually a very nice uh, added bonus of this weapon. So this leech combined with the smite heal is like pretty much enough. You can go from like 10% health all the way up to 100 in like under a second. Um, so it is pretty nice for sustain. Right, and then we just have some extra bleed, uh, not bleed, uh, blind, blind chance. Blind is pretty nice, actually. Very nice uh, defensive option. You could actually go here and get some cleanse, basically. So you're going to be pretty much immune to ignite, chill, or like uh, all these uh, ailments because you're proccing smite so much that um, if you have enough points in here, then you're pretty much going to be immune to uh, ailments, I think. All right, so let's go over to Ring of Shields next. Ring of Shields, this is like my new favorite ability. Um, basically, we're going coming down here to increase the duration, and then we have some reduced mana cost. And then we're going up here to get the... Uh, uh, so we get this heal, so every six seconds the shields will heal nearby allies. It only heals for 20, but each shield heals, right? So it's like 100 heal. Uh, really not that that much you can get it up a little bit more but we're not really using it for the heal but every time it does heal us we're getting a uh, 50 percent increased armor so that is pretty nice all right and then we have this uh warpath node over here so basically our shields are just going to take less damage and then they spin faster so they can it helps them to sort of block projectiles a lot uh, better and with the with the um shield spinning around you like uh, I don't know, I, I, it's hard to kind of like explain this, but you know, you kind of have to use it to kind of see what it feels like, but um, there's a lot of enemies that will be shooting projectiles at you, like these axe throwers or like the eye, the eye things that shoot these little like uh, necrotic damage balls at you and stuff like that. And on a lot of, a lot of my other characters, those are like the enemies I hate the most, like the, the axe throwers, you get like a pack of 10 axe throwers throwing axes at you, and then you're pretty much just dead as you're trying to run up to them. If you don't have like your teleport or your dash or whatever on uh, cooldown so you can close the gap, then they pretty much just like melt you. But with this ring of shields, they're not a problem. Um, they, It's almost impossible to die to these like axe throwers, even if there's like 20 or 30 of them throwing axes at you because... Uh, your your shields are just going to block pretty much everything. So, Ring of Shields, uh, insane defensive uh, ability. Um, really like this ability, 10 out of 10, I think. But yeah, so that is the passives. Alright, let's go into Bottle Tower Reversal. This is our main uh, damage uh, cooldown, basically. So, we are just reducing the cooldown, so we have it at a... It is a 4.7 cooldown, second cooldown, and then we can reduce this even more when we're hitting unique en enemies or when we're uh, killing mobs and monoliths, right? And then after that, we're just coming down over here, and then we're getting the 30% increased uh, damage taken over here, and then the increased damage over time taken. So that's 60%, 40%, uh, 30%, so that's like 90% increased damage that the end, the target will take when we use our uh, volatile reversal on them. So that's an insane damage boost for this build or any kind of damage over time build getting both of these nodes is going to be uh, insane for damage, right? So that is the tree. And then with the uh, plus two points we have on the gear, we're just getting this uh, warp time. So we get some increased attack speed. All right. So after that, we'll go into sigils of hope. Uh, now, usually you'd actually want to go up here, get the additional sigil, but 
I did want to actually have it on an instant cast because I want to cast it while I'm uh, casting my Warpath. I don't really want to have to stop and then cast it. And um, so I just went for the instant cast. It is uh, costing a little bit more mana and we only have three sigils, but I guess if you did get a plus two to sigils, uh, sigils of hope on your uh, relic, then you could actually go and get four. So I think rather than going for the smite, it would have been better to actually get the sigils of hope uh, on your on the pennant. All right, and after that, we're just going up for the ignite chance, and then we have the uh, last wish here. So we have a six percent chance to cast it when we're uh, when we kill an enemy. So it's pretty much going to always be up when you're in monolith. But I guess uh, against bosses, then you just have to cast it uh, manually. Okay, so that is the skills, and I'll go over how uh, I leveled on this build uh, at the end once we go over the passives. So if you're wondering what order to level them in, stuff like that, then uh, you go check that out. All right, so let's start off with Sentinel. There Now, since we are doing Ignite, uh, there is uh, a lot of things that we can't really use. So I guess first we're just getting the Strength and the Fire and Void Resistance, and then we get the... Uh, armor clad and increased damage now this increased damage is actually going to be affecting the vortex pennant uh, axe throw frequency so um i uh, definitely recommend getting points in here stun avoid is pretty much useless because when we're channeling warpath we can't be stunned so uh but the increased damage is nice to help you get some more axe throw frequency uh this uh, yeah, it's kind of don't really need any of this here. And then we go for the axe thrower and then the 30% uh, attack and cast speed with swords. So that's very nice. All right, let's go over the uh, forge guard tree next. So forge guard, there's a lot of things that we can't actually use because I don't want to go for block. Uh, so I guess we're getting this uh, battle hardened here for a little bit more defense. We got one point here. These are just travel nodes to get to the shield breaker. So. Uh, throwing attacks cost more mana, but they shred fire and physical resistance, right? So uh, each throwing attack is going to apply five fire shred stacks. So not just like, you know, this, this is not really a, like a chance to shred armor like you would have like on a, a piece of gear, but it's an actual stack. So this is actually like 500% chance to shred fire resistance. So pretty insane uh, value here. I think even like the empowered monolith um, uh, thing you can get only goes up to like 50% chance. So yeah, pretty insane uh, node over here. Uh, and then we're going to go get the smelter's might. So this is the bleed and ignite chance. This is doubled when we have a 200 weapon. So that's pretty nice. 140% bleed, 140% ignite. And the bleed gets converted to ignite with warpath, so it's pretty insane. All right, and then we're getting the strength, increased health, and then uh, we're coming over here to get this armor on potion use. I guess this is kind of nice. And then the main thing I wanted to get is this over here, so we get 15% less damage taken over time. And when we use a potion, it's doubled, so it's 30% less damage taken over time. And a lot of builds, when you build into armor and stuff like that, you are, your only weakness is going to be degen and stuff like that. So having that reduced damage taken over time is uh, really nice. And actually, think about it, it's usually you are going to be using your potion when you're standing in a degen. So it is kind of a cool like synergy over there. All right, so after that, come here, get the last point, uh, molded by the forge, so we get the 40% increased attack speed. Now this node is kind of cool, but it is only increased melee damage, so not really, we can't really take uh, use it use it that much. But anyways, so that is the forge guard tree. Let's go over paladin real quick. So paladin, you have a couple of options here. This is where you can kind of change points around. Uh, the only really thing you need is the Phoenix Strike for the Ignite Chance. But after that, so you can either go for the Conviction for the increased uh, fire, physical damage, and the uh, fire penetration. So this is actually going to help your uh, your Vortex Pennant throw a little bit more axes as well. And, uh, you know, of course, increase your fire damage. Or you can come down here and get some Elemental Resistance 
that will kind of help uh, cap your resistances. So right now I'm sitting, I'm still using uh, this defiance node here, but eventually once you get, once I get better gear, I want to move into conviction to get some more uh, fire penetration and fire damage and stuff like that. Now you can also, you don't really need to use this divine bolt thing here with the, you know, increased projectiles, but this is actually really cool. I really do like how this effect looks and it does proc quite often. Um, doesn't really hit targets that much, so you know it is kind of more just like a visual. It looks really nice, you know, when you're proccing the divine bolt and you're also proccing your uh, volcanus and the magma shards, and they're all proccing at the same time. It does really look look uh, very nice. So that's actually kind of why I'm using it. I don't really think it's actually all that good. I mean, they do count as hits, right? So this is a hit, so it can apply ignite and all that kind of stuff. So that is kind of nice. I'm not even sure if these can shotgun. If these could shotgun, then maybe it's good. I can't really tell, but it might be better just to go, you know, get some more points in conviction, or you can actually come over here and get some more health, right? So you get some more health or you get some more damage. It's up to you guys what you want to do. Uh, I, I really do like this Divine Bolt, the way it looks. It does kind of help your clear. It is, I guess you could say it's similar to... You know, on Shatter Strike, you get the ice coals, right? So it's kind of similar to those like um, uh, ice coals, I guess, right? All right. So in Void Knight, now uh, we're getting some health, Void resistance, physical resistance, and then uh, I guess I wanted to get some more increased fizz damage to help out with the Vortex Pennant cast rate. Now this is really isn't that important. You could actually just put all ten points into here, but we mainly just want to unlock the uh, volatile reversal so you don't really even need uh, to be putting these five points here you can put them somewhere else but yeah that's just kind of how I uh, have have it set up right now uh, yeah don't really need this here this could actually go into this over here so you would get a little bit less physical damage but yeah it still uh, get some more fire damage and all that kind of stuff I might actually just swap that over all right, now for the blessings, we are going to be getting the uh, chance to ignite on hit from the Black Sun. We're going to get some lightning resistance from ending the storms. It's going to help us cap our resistances pretty nicely. And then we're going to get the uh, chance to bleed on hit from the Reign of Dragons and the armor while channeling from Spirits of Fire. Now there is a fire shred, resistance shred, or increased fire damage you can get if you want to get some more offense uh, but i do recommend this armor while channeling as it is it, it's pretty uh insane amount of armor flat armor you get while channeling this is, gets increased by all of our uh, increased armor that we have on our uh, passives and gear and stuff like that all right after that we're going to get the increased armor from the uh, age of winter it's going to be pretty nice for uh, defense so that is uh the uh blessings all right, so that's going to be the passives and stuff like that. Let's go over how I leveled. So I did level this from level one using Warpath. And there is a couple of cool uniques you can use to level. So let's see. Let's go over some of my one-hand weapons. So this uh, weapon here, no level requirement. And it has a chance to inflict spreading flames on hit. So spreading flames is one of the best things for leveling to like 1 to 20, basically. It's going to do a lot of damage and kill everything, basically, right? So... Just use these and Warpath, basically. And then once you get a higher level, up to level 40, you can use the Cinder Song. And I did actually level as Dual Wield, uh, mainly because I, for Smite, I went, I know, for Warpath, I came down here first, right? I came here, got this, and then I went down here. And lastly, came up to get this, right? So if you don't have the um, two-handed weapon, and this, then you're not going to be able to sustain your mana with Cyclo, uh, Warpath. So until then, you can see Smite is actually having a three mana cost, right? So what you can do is you can use a Scepter or a Wand that has minus three to mana, spell mana cost. So that's going to make our Smite cost zero mana. So basically, yeah, you can just use this and then use another one-handed weapon. Like it needs to be a sword. So what was I using? I was using that rainbow sword, this thing. So I was using this combo, basically, uh, with the dual. And I just took dual wield on the sentinel class over here. So I take gladiator, and I was doing dual wield. 
with uh, these two weapons. Um, and then later on, I did switch over to a two hand. Um, it was this thing here, Torch the Phoenix. So was using this actually. Um, you can actually use just use this from level 20 if you want. So using this and I started using that once I got this node here. So once I got this node, I sw swapped over to that. And then basically all the way, I used that all the way to level 58 till I could use the Volcanus. So that is leveling. We can go over some of the skill trees. Um, I went, I, like I said, I went down this way and then I came down here. If you want to use a two-handed weapon like right away, then you could probably just go here first and then come up and get this. And then lastly, come down and go for the smite. Um, and then after that, for smite, you want to go for the ignite chance and spreading flames. And then after that, you go for the attack speed and lastly for the heal. Ring of shields, uh, you probably want to come down here to get the uh, increased duration and then the mana cost, basically. And then after that, we'll go over to the on the path so they kind of get more life or they take less damage. And then lastly, go for the armor. All right, and then Vault or Reversal. This, yeah, it doesn't really matter how you take it. I'd, I like to go for the increased damage first. And then after that, I'll go for the these uh, side nodes here. Uh, and Sigils of Hope. Uh, first of all, I went all the way up to over here to get the instant cast and then go for the uh last wish and then the actually no wait first i went for the last wish and then for this and then come up to the ignite chance and lastly just get the duration all right and that's going to be it for the build guide there'll be a link to the planner in the description and i hope you enjoyed this uh, i really did enjoy playing this build um uh very uh how do you say very relaxed gameplay very tanky you don't really have to worry about dying that much and it can push into the higher tier corruptions to help you farm up uh, different items for, you know, different builds you want. Or if you just want to play this build and have fun, uh, you know, spin to win. Uh, it's a great build to play. But um, let me know in the comments what you think of this build. And if there's any, uh, you know, maybe some tips you guys might have or suggestions to maybe make the build feel a bit better to play. Uh, th that definitely would be uh, very nice to hear. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.